I've been wanting to make a Sirens Rigging Upgrades video for a while, but uh, this is quite an extensive subject and it took me a bit of time to put all the elements together. And it's finally finished, so enjoy! The Siren is a lightweight 17-footer with an excellent sail area to displacement ratio of 27, which makes her racy and fun to sail. And because of her moderate kill ballast of 130 pounds, she's quite tender and uh, prone to broach in heavy weather conditions. So looking at all of this, it's important that you keep your standing and running rigging in good working order. Many sirens are now 40 to 50 year old and despite some of them being led to a slow death in backyards, there seems to be a constant flow of new owners taking advantage of a free boat uh, or one they could acquire for a few hundred dollars. Although the build quality of the sirens was generally good, old rigging exposed to the elements needs attention. This is an important element of safety to check before you head out for your first sail. The factory rigging from UK-based Holt Allen was pretty good and robust for the time, but for those in needs for repair or replacement, investing a bit of money in the more recent and better hardware will make selling your siren safer and more efficient. Over the years, the siren went through three different iterations of a main sheet arrangement. Uh, from 72 to 75, a double-ended main was used. Boats from 76 to 78 were outfitted with a center cockpit main sheet. And later models from 79 and on used a boom-end main sheet system with a 2 to 1 purchase, which is what my boat has. As mentioned earlier, the Siren being a tender boat when sailing in high or irregular winds condition, it's critical that your main sheet control works well and that you can release the pressure on your sail before you lose control of the boat and it goes for a broach. I found the factory hardware to be decent, but also a little sticky, so I upgraded the system with larger 57mm Harkin blocks, a new fiddle block, and a swivel cam cleat. The most interesting part of that new rig is the Harken ratcheting block at the swivel cam cleat. When the main sheet is out of the cleat and end held, the block ratchets. With this main sheet arrangement, I like to sit as far as I can with my hand close to the swivel block. So, when I need to uncleat the main, all I need to do is to pull up the line from the cleat. This comes handy in irregular wind conditions to control the power delivered by the mainsail or when you need to quickly ease it when the boat heals too much. I never liked the small halyard cleats that came installed at the foot of the mast and looked for hardware that would allow me to quickly and better tension them but also strike the sails faster in an emergency, all this within the safety of the cockpit. So I upgraded those cleats to swivel cam cleats, a device that is now used on many sailing dinghies and small boats. factory out all being very basic, I wanted something more flexible that provided better control of the foot tension. Also, I never trusted the plastic ring attached to the boom which has reportedly cracked on some boats. Here is an improved out haul system using small inexpensive dual and single micro blocks with a 4 to 1 purchase and an easy way to cleat the line on and off. Ok, 
Okay, I was told that sometimes you need to reef quick on the siren. So I wanted to have a single uh, reefing line installed and I think I found a pretty good system. So basically, uh, this is the, I'm going to start here at the boom. Uh, the line is attached on the other side of the boom here to the existing eye. Then goes to the aft crangle, to a cheek block on the boom. Couple fair leads, fair lead, another cheek block, and as you can see, I have to I have to install a little uh, base plate on the cheek block that I sanded because the the boom is kind of rounded, so the cheek block was flat. So I had to do a little bit of work here. Then the line goes to the mast crangle, and then it's going to go back down on the other side. And then I'll have the, on the other side, I'll put like a little cam cleat or something like this. So let's give it a try. Let me see, okay, so time to reef. Let's pull the line. Oh yeah, works really nice, very easy. And then uh, I've got a perfect, perfect reef. Um, and that will be very, convenient to have. Here is the other side of the single line uh, reefing system. So this is the attachment point uh, that I was on the boom originally. It goes to the uh, aft cringle, back on the other side uh, to the cheek block. I sh so showed you earlier on the other side of the mast that is coming out through this aft cringle here back down to a little cleat I've installed. Uh, I'll need to order a fair lead so the line doesn't come off easily, but basically that would be the undersail position. And when I need to reef, uh, all I have to do is basically pull on that line and then just one pull and uh, the wreck is pretty, pretty, well, uh, pretty well reefed. Uh, and then you can tidy it up with these little things here. But I think thank you were great. I always struggled with the original furler. The drum is small and barely holds enough line for the boat's 130% standard Genoa. The furling line is tiny and kind of a finger cutter when furling in high winds and using a larger jib for light hair would require a larger furler drum and more line. After searching for a better solution, I found out that Ronston makes a tiny continuous line furler for small boats, which is perfect for the siren. Unlike conventional furling drums, the low-profile line driver never runs out of line and can completely furl any sized sail. One issue with the factory jib lead cars is that they do not swivel and so for the cleats to operate properly, the skipper or crew member needs to sit directly opposite to the cars. Also, the factory track is too short for using larger cells with a clue reaching further aft. I upgraded my jib leads to longer tracks with swivel cam cleats which provide optimal control from any position in the cockpit. There has been a few versions of the gooseneck assembly, but on my 86 model, it has been a real weak point. And as you can see, uh, it is not a very, very strong assembly. I can see, you can see the, this bracket is bent here and I've had trouble with this uh, U bracket also getting kind of squashed when sailing under um, heavy winds and heavy conditions. So. Uh, I'm going to replace it with a stronger assembly from the Dwyer's mast. Uh, as you can see, it's much, uh, much beefier than the original Siren uh, gooseneck 
everything is kind of like oversized. Um, there's a big pin uh, to attach the foot of the tail of the sail. Um, and uh, there's a reefing hook. And um, overall, it's, you know, it looks very solid, much stronger than the original assembly. For convenience, I also added a quick release pin to secure the boom to the gooseneck. That's what I always hear when you sigh. Never in my word land could there be ways to reveal. The stock vang was adequate, but I found adjusting and locking it quite difficult. This Barton Marine size 2 vang system with its 4 to 1 purchase provide an easier pull and the cleat at the bottom fiddle block allows for much better vang release and control. Because we trailer and rig the boat a lot, I looked at every possible way to speed up rigging and be ready to sail. That was done mostly through the addition of snap shackles at the boom, vang, and halyards. I also installed oversized cotter rings on the stays, furler, and a quick release at the fore stay to put the rig under tension without having to fight with stern buckles. And one last thing, I run the topping lift line from the top of the mast back down at the foot into a cleat. I'm happy I did all this work on the boat. Not only made using the siren more fun, but it also brought added safety and better control when sailing in heavy weather. Obviously, the cost of doing all this adds up, but you can take it à la carte and make those improvements at your own pace one at a time. I hope you enjoyed it and happy sailing everyone!